Yo, what is going on, everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today, as usual. Hope you guys are having a relaxing Saturday. Um, so today we do have some interesting information, as you can tell by the title, uh, and we're going to go ahead and get into that right now. Uh, but uh, two other things I really want to talk about in terms of the charts and what we could be seeing in the short term future. So Bitcoin, um, for about, I want to say since the end of that almighty, uh, 4,000, almost $14,000 per Bitcoin peak ever since then, Bitcoin has been deciding what to go, where to go from there. You can clearly see that over the past few months, it, it does not know where it wants to go. And that's why we are getting this, uh, essentially a symmetrical triangle after an impulse which can technically maybe be considered a bull flag not 100 percent sure on that but really bitcoin just doesn't know where it wants to go and it's kind of starting to come to a close and at some point they got to really decide okay what direction are we really going to bring this thing so that's the case with bitcoin um we could see it i mean it is fairly close to this trend line right here and if that ends up popping and breaking 11k we'll most likely end up seeing a, a breakout from there just to be real with you guys but again not a guarantee but that's probably and also I feel like I know guys I'm not a Bitcoin maxi I don't support Bitcoin but like the one thing Bitcoin does have right now is it does have the halving in eight months now, it doesn't mean that just, oh, okay, just because there's less Bitcoin, the price is going to go up, but that tends to be what happens if you look at the history of Bitcoin, and every time where it does have a halvening, it instantly, it instantly triggers markets, because all these, all these corporate miners in China, uh, if, uh, when, when the halving comes out, that means that they are going to be receiving less Bitcoin reward f from these blocks. So the block reward, uh, let's say, I think it's it, don't quote me on this. I think it's at like six Bitcoin or 12 Bitcoin right now. Uh, and that would get cut in half and you'd have something like either three or six Bitcoin instead of the previous 12 that they were getting. So that means that they are getting less Bitcoin and for it to be continuously profitable for these miners that have invested money into these gigantic freaking uh computing machines they need it to be profitable and that's where i think the old uh hand behind the scenes that manipulates everything i feel like those entities are actually responsible for driving bitcoin up through manipulation because with the having coming up at this current price level it is not going to be profitable for miners at this point uh and that's where they kind of need bitcoin to pump to continue operations so they're going to do whatever by all means necessary, even if that means manipulation. So that's where I do kind of think, honestly, Bitcoin is probably going to be making waves to the upside uh, in the next year or two, in my opinion. But again, it's just the tech for me is just inferior. Uh, I don't want to be buying into some freaking BS manipulation having pump, which I mean, realistically, I mean, it sounds stupid, guys, but I mean, it's probably going to happen, but it's just... Ah, proof of work, man. I cannot leave my money in proof of work. I cannot bet on proof of work. You know what I mean? It's just, after all this research, it's ah, too hard to do that. Can't, can't do that. Anyways, I know I kind of went on a little spree there about Bitcoin, but I mean, that, I think that is important for you guys to know. Now, more importantly though, XRP, uh, we looked at the four hour triangle, um, that was taking place in yesterday's stream. And yeah, uh, this morning it has broken to the upside again, no guaranteed pump here. Uh, but I was, I believe from Pablo Venezuela in the XRP community was saying that, uh, realistically a measured move is probably to the 31 cent range, uh, which seems pretty reasonable. Uh, but yeah, you know, not a guaranteed pump, like not a guaranteed pump, but this is a much better scenario than breaking to the downside. So glad to see it. We broke to the upside. I'm not going to get my expectations too high, but let's just see what we can make of this. All right, so now, uh, actually into the freaking topic of this video, big article from Forbes comes out this morning, uh, made, made some big waves. I mean, this was just posted this morning at 9 a.m. and already has over 75,000 hits. I mean, that's pretty, pretty big. 
So uh, this is actually, for once, from, from mainstream media, this is not some BS, false information, bullcrap cryptocurrency FUD article. Like, this is actually a well-researched article uh, in terms of... Trump's previous executive order, and now this year they're making it into law, which is essentially now they have the mandate and the infrastructure uh, to ban a cryptocurrency in the U.S. Now, it sounds all bad and stuff, uh, but let's go ahead, let's read through it. There kind of is like a little bit of a bright side to this, uh, but again, at the same time, I do think Forbes is blowing this like a little bit out of proportion, but at the same time, the the reasoning and the facts that they provide, I can still understand the point we're coming from, and I think this is something that we should all be aware of and and realize because we're dealing with a a really really disrupting technology uh, technology here that can be disrupting governments and financial systems. So you gotta just know about these things that are in development right now with the government and the laws of cryptocurrency. So again, Forbes, they do kind of over-exaggerate the, oh, they could just they could just put any cryptocurrency, they could just ban anyone they want to, and it's like, okay, okay, yeah, but uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're blowing it out of proportions just a little bit, okay? Because again, I get all their points, I get where they're coming from, but just a little bit too much on the, oh my God, we're screwed kind of side, if, if you know what I mean. So, Trump executive order banning a cryptocurrency could uh, could mutate into far-reaching law. All right. So, there are at least 20 bills related to blockchain in various stages of being considered uh, by the United States Congress, but only one of it is imminent. Or imminent, I mean. Uh, potentially urgent concern to cryptocurrency users, according to Jason Brett, founder and CEO of the Value Technology Foundation, a newly formed research firm in Washington, D.C., dedicated to blockchain law. So Senate Bill 1025, which could be approved as soon as Monday, will essentially make law uh, an executive order signed by U.S. President Donald Trump last year that banned U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and organizations from buying, holding, trading, or spending the Petro, which was that, you know, that cryptocurrency they came out with, and it's supposedly backed by their vast oil reserves, and that's, I guess, their next option because they completely destroyed their own fiat currency, right? Again, a perfect example of hyperinflation. So, the Petro, essentially what's happening here is it was a executive order uh, last March of 2018 where Trump officially banned uh, the Petro cryptocurrency. And nobody really cared. I didn't even know at the time that that actually happened. I don't even think that made crypto news at the time because we would have definitely at least talked about it. Uh, so we knew about Petro, but we never heard back then that they were actually, uh, that they were actually going to ban it on an executive order. And the reason for that is because currently we have, uh, I believe what you call like a trade embargo with them. Uh, and they have the, uh, just a curtain essentially that says, no, we're not doing any business with Venezuela, no importing, no exporting, like nothing. We, you do not like do business with Venezuela essentially, right? Or yeah, sanctions. That's the, that's what you call it. Sanctions. So, uh, let's, let's keep reading here. Uh, since the Petro was presented by Trump as a way for users to circumvent U.S. sanctions uh, against Venezuela, which has been accused of crimes against humanity and whose central bank has experienced decades of hyperinflation. I mean, the World of Warcraft gold video game currency was like is now worth more than uh, Venezuela's currency. That's hilarious. So the law has attracted 19 sponsors, including Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, uh, Richard Durbin, we got Ted Cruz, Lindsey Graham, uh, Kirsten Gilbrand, and more than any uh, of the other, of the 20 other blockchain bills actually being considered. So let's skip down to right here. Uh, more than any other blockchain bills right now being considered by the U.S. lawmakers, Senate Bill 1025, officially called the Venezuela Emergency uh, Relief, Democracy Assistance, and Development Act 2019, or VERDAD for short, could set a dangerous precedent uh, for other cryptocurrencies, according to Brett, who has previously, who was a previously a uh, Booz Allen, Hamilton lead associate, if the bill proposed in April by Democratic Senator Robert Menendez of New Jersey uh, is approved, Petro would be the first cryptocurrency banned in the United States, and as Brett puts it, could make future bans as easy as filling in the blank. 
we have to understand here. The government starts feeling threatened. That's where they can start trying to make things like this law. And that's what they're doing now. So you got to understand it's not only are they just, you know, ban the Petro, but they're now making it law for the government to step in and ban a specific cryptocurrency. And that could be a, that could be for a variety of reasons, which some could actually be false. But the biggest one being it is genuinely a threat to government. And now by, by them making this law, like this is where it's important to really realize that like, look at what they do, not what they say. I mean, what they've just done here is made it law to ban a cryptocurrency. That's something pretty soon will be legal, right? So that's where I could see XRP is like, <laughs> is the most regulatory friendly cryptocurrency out there. I have no concerns about XRP being banned. I want you guys to understand this. I have zero concern that XRP would ever be banned in the US. I mean, it is transparent. It's open. It works with the regulators. It's not trying to replace the government or it's not trying to replace the financial system. It's trying to work with the existing one and build on top of that infrastructure. So XRP, <laughs> that is never going to get banned. But the reason why I'm going over this is because guess what? Not every cryptocurrency out there is all really, really professional Ripple and XRP engaging with high tier regulators and talking with them and, and working with them on, you know, establishing proper regulations and educating them about your digital asset. There are currencies out there that are going like Monero. Oh, pfft. No, screw, screw the government. We're having a network that is completely private and anonymous. Guess what? I don't think old Trump is going to like that. All right? So that's where you could really see that now that it's law, I feel like now there are some cryptocurrencies out there, especially the ones focused on privacy, that could be getting the ban hammer here. I mean, seriously. It's definitely possible. So he also says uh, the implications for this are huge because it could be Bitcoin or some other cryptocurrency inserted into this language. Like exactly, literally filling in the blank. You know, they want to they want to ban Monero. They pull up this freaking uh, Senate Bill 1025, uh, Control F on Petro, put in Monero, hit enter <laughs> to replace all those words. You freaking got a brand new bill that just officially banned Monero. I mean, it could be that easy now because of them wanting to establish this law. Okay, so yeah, we're basically, we're talking about a roadmap for how to ban a particular currency. Now listen to this. To develop a methodology to assess how any digital currency, digital coin, or digital token that was issued by, for, or on behalf of the Venezuela President Nicolas Maduro regime is being utilized to circumvent or undermine United States sanctions. But guess what? I don't think that bill is just going to be strictly about the Venezuela cryptocurrency. They're probably going to open that up to other assets that they might want to ban because it can violate regulations. Okay, and then you, one last one, one last one. So on the surface, uh, the reason the law includes for banning cryptocurrency is the whole, oh the, oh, the corruption, the narcotics trafficking, money laundering. Oh, God, because, yeah, they the Congress love to rip on crypto for how much it was used for money laundering and all this, you know, illicit activities. But that's such BS. It's the U.S. dollar. I mean, come on. Have you seen narcos before? It's, it's done in the U.S. dollar. All right. So come on. Ah, but that's again, that's the, the front end public like, oh, OK, that makes sense, you know, to protect, you know, protect us from all this. Are easy, most Americans, uh, are easy for most Americans to agree on, uh, but as Venezuela, China, and other nations would love to see the U.S. dollar lose its position as global reserve. I mean, Mark Carney, Bank of England, and like the, uh, I believe the French Central Bank as well is also saying, like, they're backing up the same statement, like a virtual currency could really ease reliance on the U.S. dollar as global reserve currency. I mean, China and Russia, I imagine, would love to see that. So, um, so, okay, so Venezuela, China, other nations that would love to see the U.S. dollar lose its position as a global reserve, start to explore cryptocurrency, the asset once thought of as uncensorable becomes both a potential threat and a potential solution. Bitcoin and more privacy-focused cryptocurrencies like Zcash and Monero could keep citizens in some of those very same oppressive resumes connected to global commerce. 
So again, every currency he just listed, the more privacy focused ones, probably what the government's going to be going after, not XRP. Oh, and again, this is where it's like, it's really not all bad because the fact that now Congress is really going forward on this and we have like more than 20 bills right now that have to do with cryptocurrency actively going through Congress, this is proving that it's growing and it's getting bigger. The ecosystem's getting bigger. The individual involvement, the institutional involvement, it's all getting bigger. So listen to this. That kind of proves it right here. Last week alone, Congress hosted three hearings related to cryptocurrency, and Brett expects that the pace will only increase as giant corporations and state governments increasingly adopt digital assets. Right there. And to close this all off, now it is the time to pay attention. And again, if we ever have any upcoming uh, Senate hearings or Congress hearings that are publicly broadcast about crypto, you guys know we are going to stream that and cover that on this channel. We have in the past. It is very, very important to do that because re we really need to stay up to date with that kind of stuff. So because there are 20 active bills that could be impacted and could, ch and could change in some way, shape, or form along the way, it's very important that we watch them almost like the weather map. So guys... In a way, this is kind of like regulations are really coming. They're making this stuff law. They're making it law to ban this, you know, Venezuelan petrol currency. And I 100% agree that they should ban the petrol currency. I mean, there's, there's no, I mean, I get why they're doing it. I mean, I don't think anyone in the U.S. would actually even care to use it. But who knows, maybe that would start happening in the future or whatever. So they're just doing that as a safety precaution against their own Fiat currency, I guess. So, I mean, I understand why they're banning it. I mean, I don't really care either way. I don't use Petro, never plan to. Not, <laughs> not on, not any of my concern. But uh, now, yeah, they are, you know, they have a bill now. They have a law. They're going to have a law enacted where it's just straight up banning a cryptocurrency. So, again, it's easy as kind of copy and paste. And then all of a sudden, you could see other projects potentially uh, get hit with the ban hammer by the U.S. And I wonder if the U.S. is doing this potentially in preparation for banning Libra. Because, yeah. Whew, uh, Congress and every other regulatory body in existence all raised their eyebrow at Libra and went, hmm, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. So, again, that's something we could see with this law that is going to be enacted. But, guys, you got to remember... Be careful in these like low level privacy focused currencies where it's clearly trying to stay away and stay hidden and anonymous. Government's eventually going to crack down on that kind of stuff. Now, I mean, Bitcoin in a sense is, you know, private, but it's actually a lot more traceable than people think. Um, but I don't think they could go about. I mean, if they did decide to ban Bitcoin, I wow, I don't know. But guys, what we got to consider now is that the law is being enacted to do that and we need to prepare for it. However, though, <laughs> XRP, we are 100% in the clear. We work with, I mean, Ripple's already talked with White House administration, high level White House administration. So I think we're good. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning the video today. Really do appreciate it. Make sure you smash the likes and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.